It's almost exactly 20 years ago to the day that Lota Janiak stood here on Jena's Central Market Square. It was the autumn of 1989. 40,000 others, nearly half of the town's population, were here as well. The whole square was full of people. I can't even say where I was standing anymore. It was my very first demonstration and a major experience. The issues were about reforming society. You simply had the feeling you had something to contribute. Janiak is a mathematician. He's been working at SAIS for three decades. Back then, he worked in the former plant right in downtown Jena. Today, he's based at company headquarters. When SAIS moved out in 1991, they didn't need this compound, so it was converted into an office complex. The buildings over there, they're SAIS buildings as well, and date back to 1910 and 1913. They now house university departments. This dome was an observatory. They used to test the telescopes here. The enormous factory in the center was no longer needed. SAIS moved to the edge of town. Today, some 4,000 people work for the successor firms to the state-owned East German company, which employed 20,000 people at the end of the 1980s. But the optical industry and the town of Jena are still inextricably linked. Today, the Zeiss production facility still produces microscopes, lenses, and another traditional stalwart, projectors for planetariums. The original Karl Zeiss Jena was founded over 150 years ago, and the modern company still plays a dominant role in the lives of town residents today. If people work at Zeiss, jobs they do at home or in the garden will be more than precise. If something's a little off, that's bad. Some locals say this obsession with precision helped the region survive the ups and downs that came after the fall of the Berlin Wall. SAIS veterans have know-how that is still needed today. Jena has certainly become a success story in the East since reunification, but it was strong from the outset. There was a high concentration of well-trained human capital, and technological development was relatively high, not only at Karl Zeiss, but also at other companies such as Schott or Jena Farm, and there were a lot of academic institutions that had important potential. After the state-owned East German optics giant was broken up, hundreds of small companies were established in Jena, meaning jobs stayed in the area. Many of the people behind the boom were real specialists, like engineer Fred Grunat. Instead of applying for unemployment benefits, he and several other colleagues established a company to develop industrial electronics. Today it employs 85 people. Many people who work for us, or at Jain Optik or Zeiss, came from the old East German Zeiss company. The structural setup is different now, but the personal network, the lifeblood of Jena and a key part of Jena's success story after reunification, lives on in the people. The town's 25,000 students also profit from that network. Today, the university is the biggest employer in Jena. Jena is a good place to study, says Jacqueline Jope. The 25-year-old is just about to graduate with a degree in scientific instrumentation, an engineering course in English that is unique in Germany. Lectures are very small. You learn the basics in big groups, but when you specialize, you're in lectures with just 15 people. I can ask questions personally and actually discuss things with the professor. In addition to attending classes, Jacqueline Jopa also works part-time at SAIS as part of a work-study program. She plans to start writing her PhD thesis soon. The university and SAIS share a campus. Proximity means that theory and practice are closely linked. It also makes finding a job after graduation easier. The chances are very good. My chances are very good. There are big companies like Carl Zeiss, Jenoptik, and other smaller firms that are Carl Zeiss spin-offs. There are lots of opportunities. In 1989, people in Jena began to exploit those opportunities. 
Two decades later, it appears they have made historical change into a success story.